Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the second degree Taylor polynomial for the function f of x equals x to the 1 over x centered at e. This is example 3. Uh, and I haven't yet made videos on examples one and two because it's not as fun as this video. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, before I start, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless this video, bless you and I. And here we go. Now, uh, if you look at what I have on the uh, right side, we see that the nth degree Taylor is like this. So for the second degree Taylor, we need this fella, this fella, and that fella. And our center A here is E. Yeah? Okay. So basically, we need to get to first and second derivatives for this function. All right. Now, our function f, um, we want to rewrite so that we can find the derivative. And we rewrite it like this, e to the ln of um, x to the 1 over x. And now, using properties of the natural log, and logs in general, we could write that um, this implies this implies that f is f is equal to that's f of x. I guess I could be more clear. f of x is equal to e to the using our log rules, uh, we could write one over x times ln of x. Right from here, we see that f prime f prime of x is going to equal. Well, uh, the derivative of e to anything is e to anything times the derivative of anything by chain rule, right? So uh, we see that f prime is going to be e to anything where anything is this times the derivative of anything. So the derivative of this. So times the derivative of this. The derivative of this is going to require product, product rule, right? because it's a product between 1 over x and ln of x. So uh, using the product rule, the derivative of 1 over x is uh, negative 1 over x squared, and then uh, times ln of x, right? And then plus 1 over x times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. So I could just write 1 over x squared right here. Yeah, OK, cool. Now remember, uh, this here, uh, if I throw back the 1 over x on top of the x as an exponent, I could get back from here to x to the 1 over x, right? So I could just write in place of this, I'm saying in place of this here, I could write x to the 1 over x. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And then, and then what? And then what do we have in this part? Um, well, we have, we have um, x squared as a common denominator, so I could throw that underneath here. And then I have, I can write negative ln of x plus 1 as 1 minus ln of x. So I have times 1 minus ln of x. All right? Okay, cool. And this here I can simplify using exponent rules and write it as x to the second minus 1 over x, right? Like basically a to the b over a to the c I can write as a to the c minus b if I so chose, right? And so basically I'm saying uh, instead of what I have here, I could write x that, right? Okay. And of course I have to get rid of this. So this is f prime. This is f prime of x in particular. And now we need to find f double prime. Yeah, remember, we have to evaluate f prime and f double prime at e. Um, and I'll work on evaluating f prime at e. But let's get to f double prime. Okay, so to find f double prime, uh, we need to clearly use quotient rule on f prime, right? It's the derivative of f prime. So first, let me show that uh, f prime, if we so chose, can be written as it can be written as one minus ln of x, and then using the same trick of uh, exploiting the inverse relationship between e and ln, we can write this fella as uh, e to the ln of e to the ln of x to this power, but that's going to turn out to be e to the uh, 2 minus 1 over x, right, times ln of x. Right, what I'm claiming is that this here is the same as this here, right? Okay, cool. And this 2 minus 1 over x here, I could write as 2x minus 1 all over x, right? Uh, 2x minus 1 all over x. 2x minus 1 all over x. But of course, this here, as I said, is the same as uh, 2 minus 1 over x, what I just uh, wrote there. Yeah? 
Okay, I did all that so that finding the second derivative is easier. The second derivative, obviously, is the derivative of the first derivative. And it's going to be, this time we need to use quotient rule. So the derivative of the top, uh, 1 goes away, and then minus 1 over x for negative ln of x. So we have, we have um, minus 1 over x, right? And then times the bottom. And remember, the bottom, this here, is just that. So times uh, x to the 2 minus 1 over x, right? And then minus, minus the top, which is 1 minus ln of x, and then times the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the bottom, well, we're not done. All of this divided by the bottom squared, right? And the bottom, again, is x to the 2 minus 1 over x, right? And so this squared, right, is going to be, uh, using exponent rules, we multiply 2 and this here. So I could write 4 minus 2 over x. Uh, and get rid of this 2 here, right? Uh, but I'm not done, as I said. So 4 minus, ah, I don't like that, 4, 4 minus 2 over x, right? But like I said, I'm not done here because I did uh, the derivative of the top times the bottom minus uh, the top times the derivative of the bottom. But wait, uh, this here, whatever I write, I don't need to worry about it because uh, remember, we're using a as e, right? And so when I plug in e in this part, I'm going to get 1 minus ln of e. ln of e is 1, so I'm going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0 times junk. So I don't care about what this stuff is for the purpose of the second derivative. So uh, evaluate it at e. So uh, let's go on with f double prime of e, which is uh, negative 1 over e, right? Negative 1 over e times times e to the 2 minus 1 over e. And then, as I said, minus 0 times stuff that I don't care about, because it's all 0. All of this divided by uh, e to the 2 minus 1 over e squared, right? And I intentionally went backwards from here to what it was, because look at what I could do. Well, if I grab another marker, I could do this, right? I could cancel this and get rid of that. Now, I see that this is going to equal, I see that this is going to equal uh, negative 1 over, negative 1 over, um, my bad, 1 over uh, e, which is e to the first, times the stuff, which is uh, e to the 2 minus 1 over e. And a to the b times a to the c is a to the b plus c, so we just have to add 1 in these guys. And so that's just going to be e to the 3 minus 1 over e. So I could just change this into a 3 and get rid of that, is what I'm saying. So this is a second derivative evaluated at e right here. And the first derivative evaluated at e is not as difficult. What is it going to be? Well, uh, this implies that f prime of e is going to be 1 minus ln of e, that's 0, over who cares what the denominator is as long as it's not 0, and it's clearly not 0. So the first derivative evaluated at e is 0. Ah, cool. So that means that the second degree Taylor uh, centered at e for this function is going to look like this. f of a is going to be f of e. Let me start here. So f of a is going to be f of e, right? plus f prime of e, as we just saw, is 0. So uh, the x term is gone. And then I'll have uh, f double prime of e over 2 factorial times x minus e to the second power. And I'll write what all of that will look like here uh, in red. And so f of e would be e to the 1 over e. So we have that um, x to the 1 over x is approximately, using a second degree polynomial, it's approximately equal to uh, f of e, as I said, is e to the 1 over e. And then uh, the x term is gone, so we have minus 1 over e to the 3 minus 1 over e times x minus e. That's a lot of e squared. Yeah?
Okay, cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, keep watching. And a message before I go is uh, Jesus rules this world. No one else rules this world. Jesus Christ rules this world. And so may Iran uh, live long. So long live Iran and long live Palestine. Take care.